about Bomberman. It's a series I played a decent amount of games with growing up. Uh, you know, Bomberman Hero on N64, Bomberman 64, Bomberman Pocket, games like that. Uh, they were some of the games from my childhood, and when I found out Bomberman Generation on GameCube was a thing, I almost instantly bought it when I found it for 5 bucks at a GameStop one day. Uh, I remember not liking it back then, but who knows, maybe things have changed. Let's find out. Ah, Bumbler and her, I mean Hudson Soft, uh, of course handled this game, but strangely enough, the game was published by Majesco here in the States. I guess times were hard for Hudson back in the day. Uh, seriously, I couldn't find anything online as toward why Majesco published this game, but yeah, let's just keep going. Anyways though, in Bomberman Generations, you play as Bomberman. And you have to rescue the four bomb ships, I think? Gonna be honest with you guys, I didn't pay much attention to the story. I guess one alright thing about it is that all the story clips in the game have voice acting, but it's not good voice acting. Here, take a listen for yourselves. Loaded on the freighter have been pulled in by the gravity of near- Let's be real here, we're here to play the game, so... Let's see how good of a game it actually is. Alright, so starting out, you get your choice of three worlds to choose from. You know, your typical water, desert, grassy worlds. All fairly typical selection for a game like this. Starting the game, though, you'll notice Bomberman moves pretty slow, and he can only drop one bomb at a time, and that's because you need to pick up power-ups for him. Once you have Bomberman all the way powered up, though, you'll notice he's pretty dang strong by himself. Bomberman's top speed is faster than most enemies in the game, and since most enemies don't run after you, I tend to find the best way to play the game is just by avoiding enemies most of the time. There is also the fact that, well, since Bomberman drops bombs, and since you take damage from them if they hit you because, well, you know, they're bombs, and couple that with the fact that you have no real control over when the bombs go off, yeah, you get the point. It may be cowardly running away from enemies, but it's the way how I found myself having the most amount of fun while playing the game. Another thing you'll notice is that Bomberman has no jump. Yeah, though, Bomberman has no way to jump in this game, and a bulk of the games in the series don't either. Instead, Bomberman games tend to be built around level gimmicks, like the moving ice blocks in this stage, or the floating logs and lily pads in this stage. While I don't find a lot of these stage gimmicks particularly impressive, they did get the job done of making me feel like no one stage was the same as the other. The goal of every stage is pretty simple get from point A to point B. Yeah, sure, the old man whose name escapes me will radio you at the start of every stage, either giving advice of how to get through the stage or what your mission is, and it may not seem that simple, but trust me it is. Bomberman Generation is a fairly easy game, honestly, but thankfully not the type of easy where you get bored of the game, but instead the type where it just becomes a fun breeze through the game. Honestly though, it actually wouldn't be that easy if it wasn't for the Carabomb system in the game. What are Carabombs, you may be wondering? Well, basically they're Bomberman's attempt at Pokemon. You collect them, battle them, fuse them together. Now, how do these little guys break the game? Well, basically every Carabomb carries an ability. Some are worthless, like there is one that lets you kick further away, however two of these give you the power to either take half damage from enemies and of course let you blow up a bomb anytime you want to. With half damage most enemies won't hurt you at all and you can kinda just run past most enemies in the game. As for the bombs exploding anytime you want is powerful because well, basically no enemies stand a chance of avoiding your bombs. I feel like the care bombs weren't implemented very well. Yeah, sure, other Bomberman games have power-ups where you could detonate bombs whenever you wanted, uh, but those all had the ultimate drawback of going away when you would die. Care bombs don't have that at all. Instead, the drawback is supposed to be that if you die, you start back to one with all your bomb power-ups, but you can completely negate that by just not continuing on the game over screen. There's honestly no point in continuing either, there are no checkpoints in these stages, or at least 
none that I ever encountered, so yeah, just always hit quit when you die, and you're golden pretty much. The level design is pretty good, I think. The game's worlds tend to follow the basic tropes of a game like this, you know, desert, grass, water, but there are a few things that keep them unique. The first thing is that the levels transition from one gimmick to another. Take for instance, the grass world starts as your prototypical grass world and then becomes a rocky mountain. The water world has you naturally underwater and then transitions into this frozen ice and snow world. I really like stuff like that in games like this. It makes me feel like the world is changing around me as I go further into the game. Another great detail is that most of Bomberman's main enemy, the Higgy Higgy Bandits, change outfits in certain worlds. Like for instance, in the water world, they wear snorkels underwater, and in the ice world, they wear jackets and hoodies. I'm a big sucker for things like that too, you know. I get that it would take a long time to design new enemies and attack patterns, so just adding a new outfit to the most recurring enemy in the game is a nice design choice in my opinion. There are, believe it or not, three different types of bosses in this game. There are end stage bosses, which are pretty lame honestly, they mostly just sit there and take hits until you win. Then there are boss fights like this one that take place on the third stage of every world. These ones are again not that challenging like the end stage bosses. Most of these have the same three attack patterns and they just are easy to learn and counterattack. Uh, the main interesting thing about these is that you fight fellow bombers and that's pretty interesting I guess. Uh, and then lastly of course there are the main world end bosses and these ones can actually be pretty challenging, mostly because they have a lot more health than Bomberman does, uh, and they can do a lot of damage too. Now that's a lot of damage! The last gameplay type is minigames, and honestly you guys, I really hated the minigames in this game. Yeah, these things really rub me the wrong way. They're not a bad idea, it's just the execution for them that bothers me the most about them. You see, most of these minigames operate under the system that if you don't get the perfect run, then you fail instantly. And I just really hate stuff like that in games, you know. I like a small margin of error, I don't know if that's just a personal thing. And you want to do these minigames too, because you end up getting elemental bombs from them, and those make it easier to kill the corresponding bosses for that world. And they also uh, open up different pathways, so yeah, you want to do the minigames, so uh, me disliking them is actually kind of a big deal in my opinion. Graphically speaking, I think the game looks pretty good for a pretty early GameCube game. Nothing spectacular by any means, but nothing horrible either. I do want to point out the frame rate though. It's surprisingly very solid and holds 60 frames per second, despite all the hectic stuff that can happen on screen at times. So that's pretty impressive to say the least. Uh, I also really like the soundtrack of the game. I actually didn't notice it at first when I played through the game, but when I gave it a listen while I was creating this video, I was really impressed by it. I especially like the boss theme. That song is great in my opinion. Last but not least, I can't forget to bring up the multiplayer. It's typical Bomberman multiplayer. It's a four-way free-for-all with a few extra modes sprinkled in there to spice things up. I'll be honest, I've never cared much for Bomberman's multiplayer before, but I know a great deal of people probably just gave a sigh of relief that it is in fact here and intact. Overall, I really enjoy Bomberman Generations. Uh, yeah, it wasn't the best game that I ever played, but it definitely was a fun romp. A uh, little easy, save for a few of those boss fights, but overall, good game in my opinion. Definitely worth adding to your GameCube collection. I give it three and a half stars out of five. Now, I know I said I'd do Bomberman Jetters next, but I'm sorry I just don't want to rush into another Bomberman game. But I think you guys will find that my next game is just as explosive as Bomberman. <laughs> uh, so, if you like this video, like it down below, comment, subscribe, all that good stuff, and follow me on Twitter for updates on videos. Have a wonderful night, YouTube, and peace!